Okay, so let's have a think about what geography is, what physical geography is, and what science is. This is a definition from one of your basic textbooks, Matthews and Herbert, and they say, geography is a study of the surface of the earth, the phenomena and processes of the earth's natural and human environments and landscapes at local to global scales. The basic division, according to them, is between physical geography, which they say is unambiguously a science, analyzing the physical makeup of the earth's surface, and human geography, where the focus is where the focus is on the human occupancy of the area. Now you don't have to take what you're reading at a textbook. You don't have to take what you read in a textbook at face value. You can think about it for yourself and decide what you like, what you don't like, compare with other definitions and compare with your own definition. But that's a reasonable place uh, to start from Matthews and Herbert there. And this is a very common way of representing what geography is all about. Uh, people say it's about space, place and environment. Now in your reading for this week, I want you to explore what people mean by those terms, space, place and environment, and come up with some specific examples that would fit in each of those circles. So is space just the area within which we do everything? Are places specific locations within that space? And is the environment the overall setting within which all of that happens? That's one way of looking at it. But have a think about it for yourselves and try to come up with your own definitions and examples of what geographers mean by space, place and environment. Certainly those are, as Matthews and Herbert say, they are core concepts in geography. But in looking at space, place and environment, geographers are very interested in things such as distributions, locations, connections, what we would automatically call the, the geographical aspects of something, the spatial aspects of something, distributions, locations, connections. So distributions might be, as I put on the diagram here, that tells you something about the patterns of things through space. Locations, well locations I guess are particular places or things where certain things happen. And connections, well those are the systems that make geography work, that tie geography together. So when we think about geography in terms of distributions, locations and connections, we're not now just looking at the topics or the subject matter of geography. We're really saying that these are ways of looking at that subject matter. These are the methods or these are the, the approach, if you like, that geographers take. And that's really a key point for this session. Geography is defined both by its subject matter and by its method or approach. You can't define it just by one of those because it will share it with another discipline. So other disciplines look at the same sub subject matter that geography looks at. It's only when you consider the method or the approach that geographers use to look at those things that geography becomes really distinctive. So geography's subject matter at a very broad level, we could say, well, that's the physical and human characteristics of the Earth's surface. The geographical approach or the method, well, that's using evidence that we find in spatial patterns, the use of evidence embodied in spatial patterns or distributions. It's that use of specifically spatial geographical data that defines something as being geographical, if you like. So if you want to come up with a, a definition of geography that, that, that combines those together, which is what you were trying to do in the, in the earlier exercises, well, you could have come up with something along the lines of, of, of these. Geographers use locations, distributions, patterns and connections as evidence to get answers to questions about the physical and human characteristics of the Earth's surface. So the physical and human characteristics are the, the subject matter, if you like, and the use of geographical evidence or geographical data, that's the method or the approach. So if we're thinking primarily now about physical geography rather than geography as a whole, we can do a similar thing and we can say, well, we need both the subject matter, we need the topics of physical geography, and we also need the approach that physical geography takes. So we'll, we'll look, look at those in, 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 uh, in sections. First of all, what is the subject matter of physical geography? And I guess most of you, because you've signed up for a, a course with lots of, lots of physical geography in it, and this module is all about physical geography, you've done some reading already, you're, you're, you're embarked on, the, on this course. So you'll probably agree, I guess, that the subject matter of physical geography, as it says here, it's the physical processes and the physical features of the Earth's surface and near surface environment and and this is why physical geography, or one of the reasons why physical geography is important, it's not only the processes and features of the, uh, the physical processes and features of the uh, surface and near surface environment, it's also the interaction 
of those physical phenomena with human activity. So a really important area in physical geography is dealing with natural hazards. Another really important area of physical geography is dealing with natural re resources. So it isn't just about the physical angle, it's also about the way that the physical angle interacts with the human angle. We'll come back and say a little bit more about that uh, in just a second. But first of all, I've done a little bit on the, on, on the whiteboard just to try and get you thinking. Uh, so have a look at that and then we'll come back to this afterwards. <laughs> 